Hey Freebs Nation, Jordan Page from FunCheaperFree.com here. And today, we're going inside my freezer. And by freezer, I mean freezer. I have a lot. But if you guys have been following me for longer than like 30 seconds, especially on Instagram, you know that I'm a little bit of a food hoarder. It's true and it's okay, let's just get it out there. I'm fine with it, I'm secure. I have several freezers in my house and one of my most requested videos ever is to get a tour of my freezers and for me to teach you what I freeze, how, and some of my best tips, tricks, and hacks for freezing food and keeping it on hand. So today we're gonna do it. I'm gonna take you inside my freezers and I'm hopefully going to inspire you that regardless of how big or small your freezer is, how many you have, that the importance in general is just to use it to its fullest potential. Because by freezing food, leftovers, extra meals, all of it, you can save so much money on your grocery bill and save a lot of time and hassle when it comes to cooking dinner especially. Without further ado, let's get inside these freezers and I'm gonna show you what mine look like and what you can freeze and how. Let's do it. Okay, before I get into the freezers though, let me explain some tools that you pretty much have to have on hand in order to freeze things successfully. Because one of the questions I get very often is, how do you avoid freezer burn? How do you keep your food tasting good? How do you get it to taste good after it's been in your freezer for like a year or two? Let me tell you. Here are the tricks. Number one is get yourself some disposable baking pans. These are money. This huge pack I got from Costco for a couple of bucks, but honestly, the dollar store has so many different sizes and varieties. This comes in handy because as you're cooking dinner, you can take a pan, double whatever you're making, put it in a pan, like I said, there's lots of different sizes, cover it with foil and freeze it, and then you have a freezer meal ready to go. You just pop the entire thing in your oven, throw it away when you're done, no mess, no fuss. The next thing you need are Ziploc bags. The trick is you wanna make sure it says freezer on it. I tend to get the Ziploc brand because they go on sale at Costco. Um, none of this is sponsored, by the way, but I do find that their zippers hold up really well, but make sure it's freezer. Another thing that is totally worth the investment, and I will link all this stuff below, is a food sealer, a vacuum sealer. I got one for Christmas, and you guys, I have never looked back. And it helps significantly with freezer burn. So especially with meat, I almost always vacuum seal my meat. Another little doodad that I found that I'll link below that's pretty cool is this little freezer cube. It's not very big, but one thing that's really nice is if you're freezing something that's liquid, like a sauce or a soup, then what I'll do is I'll stick it in a freezer bag and then freeze it inside this little freezer cube shelf so that it freezes flat without taking up an entire shelf in your freezer. The next thing you need is some really sturdy aluminum foil. Another helpful tool are these freezer safe, microwave safe, BPA free, dishwasher safe. Pretty much will do everything but teach you French. Meal containers so that when I make excess of something or if I want to make some make ahead lunches, you just put your own little meal together, pop the lid on, stick it in the freezer, and then you can microwave it directly in this container and have a quick go-to lunch or single serve dinner. So nice. Last but not least, you've gotta get yourself a good inventory so that as you're cleaning out your fridge or your freezer or whatever it is, you keep track of what you have, the date that you put it in there, and how much you have of whatever that item is. And don't worry, I've got some free printables for you. I will link to them below so you can keep track of everything in your freezers and fridge for free. You're welcome. I love you. And Sharpie. Don't forget Sharpie. I'm a little bit of a Sharpie for you, so you'll need these too. Since we're in the kitchen, I thought I would just start with freezer numero uno, which is this cute little guy at the bottom of our fridge. Now, full disclaimer, warning, 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 warning. I have not cleaned out these freezers. I have not organized them. I just wanted to show you this in a raw, organic, real life way. So let's hope I can even get this thing open. Let's say some prayers, okay? Let's do it. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through this freezer and I'm just gonna show you things that you can freeze and how, and hopefully it'll blow your mind. Okay, what do we start with? Number one is, of course, meat and chicken. The best way to freeze meat is to vacuum seal it. But if you do have meat like these chicken tenders that come in bags, you can just throw them straight in your freezer. You're just gonna wanna use them quickly or else they will collect some freezer burn and ice on them. Breadcrumbs. You know you can freeze breadcrumbs. By freezing them, they actually stay fresher way longer, like years. 
so you can use them for baking as usual. Which brings me to bread in general. We are big fans of freezing bread in our house because otherwise it goes bad quickly. So bread, guacamole, you know you can freeze guacamole. You can actually even freeze whole avocados straight in the freezer before they go bad. You're welcome. Cheese. This is something a lot of people don't know you can freeze. If it's sliced or shredded, you can stick it in the freezer as is. If it's a block of cheese, you're going to want to slice or shred it or else it usually comes out crumbly when you thought. So cheese. Gogurts and popsicles, of course, like basically one of our three main food groups in our house. Nasty bananas. All right, this one might be on its way out, but if you've got some stinky bananas, throw them in the freezer, let them thaw a little bit, and you can make delicious banana bread without stinking up your kitchen. Oh, that's so gross. Yeast. Did you know you can freeze yeast? And actually, you probably should, because unless you bake a ton, you probably don't go through it fast enough to keep it fresh. Keep it in the freezer, it'll stay fresher longer. Cooked meat. This is a big one that people do not know that you can freeze meat that has been fully cooked. Think about it. When you go to Costco or go to the store, when you walk down the freezer aisle and you see things like frozen, grilled chicken strips, you can basically do that at home. Anything in the freezer aisle, you can freeze at home as well, including cooked meat. In this case, I've got cooked taco meat and cooked chicken skewers that we didn't eat quickly enough, so I threw it in the freezer. So now, on a busy night, I can pull out meat that's fully cooked and thawed and have a dinner ready in 10 minutes or less. Baking chocolate, chia seeds, flax seeds, I don't know, other kinds of seeds. Nuts, oh yes you can. Your nuts, not to freeze nuts. <laughs> so, Pine nuts, for example, we love these sprinkled on our salads, but any kind of mixed nuts, fancy nuts, snacking nuts, baking nuts, freeze them. Just trust me on this. Chocolate. Not only does it keep it away from your kids because they can't find your stash in your messy freezer, but these chocolates were from last Easter, which was over six months ago, and not only are they refreshing when they're cold, they taste just as fresh as the day I bought them because I put them directly in my freezer. Shh, just don't tell anyone that I have these. Lunch meat, this is another thing we do all the time in this house. When lunch meat is on sale, or if we're buying it bulk, like from Costco, we will just take out one package that we need, stick everything else in the freezer. All you need to do is pull it out a day or two earlier than you need it, let it thaw, and it tastes just as fresh and good as the day you bought it, and then you're not wasting any by letting it expire before you use it up. Banana bread and muffins actually freeze great. Fish and seafood, of course, can be frozen. Hot dogs, they are amazing frozen, actually. So buy them in the summer when they're on sale. Enjoy them all year long. Freezer meals, which we'll talk about this more a little bit later, but again, double what you're cooking, triple foil the top, label what it is, and freeze it. You can let it thaw the night before or, or what I like to do on a busy night is stick it straight in the oven, totally rock hard frozen, let it sit in the oven as the oven is coming to temperature and adjust the baking time, usually about double the baking time. Just make sure it's warm, heated through and cooked thoroughly. Hummus freezes amazingly well. So especially when you buy it in bulk or if you buy those little individual packs of hummus, stick half of them in your freezer so they don't go bad before you get through them. Egg roll wrappers, this is random, but yes, you can. Yes, yes, you can. Cookies, baked items, everyone just needs them on hand, so just, yes. Bagels and bread, typically I do freeze these in freezer Ziplocs. Shake out any ice that's accumulated in the bag, let them thaw out on your counter. If the bread comes out a little crusty, a little hard, wrap that piece of bread in a damp paper towel, microwave it for like 10 seconds, and it makes the bread nice and soft again. And then you can toast it and do whatever else you want. Okay, as I put all of this stuff back, one quick tip I wanna tell you about arranging your freezer is the deeper you are in your freezer, the more cold it is, which is better for things like meat, seafood, fish. So load your freezer first with meat and protein, baskets and shelves in the top areas of the freezer, save for things like popsicles, dairy, frozen lunch or dinner items, things that really just don't need to be quite as cold. Okay, I think that's it for this freezer. Let me go show you the next one. 
All right, now we're in the depths of the bat cave, AKA the basement. Now I'm gonna show you some more of what is in yet another freezer. So let's just dive right in. I told you I'm a food hoarder. Don't judge me. Okay, what have we got here? So again, we've got lots of meat. I know you guys are gonna ask, so where do I get all this meat from? You know, I have to tell you, I used to buy it bulk through Zaycon. When we moved in, the owners left this one behind and we had one of our own. So this one is pretty empty right now. So what we might do is when we go down on our meat supply, we may just split a cow, find a family and buy in at a quarter of a cow because I know that's a way to get bulk meat for cheap. Otherwise, just look for deals at your local grocery store and when meat goes on sale, buy as much as you can afford and as much as you can store so that as you need it, you don't have to run to the store and pay full price for it. Chocolate chips, any form of chocolate, including s'mores chocolate, freeze is great. So freeze those. Chocolate. For moi, always a good idea. Beans and refried beans, especially the homemade kind, freeze fabulously. Seeds and garden items, especially for emergency preparedness. And if you're a big gardener and had a great crop of something and want to revive those seeds the next year, you can flash freeze them and they will grow. Oh, they will grow. Gotta give them a little, uh, little sunshine, they'll grow. Sauces and soups, you can freeze a number of different ways. I love using just big mason jars. Just be sure to label the top with what it is and be sure to label the date. It's not like a mystery sauce in a jar. And one of the tricks is be sure to leave extra space at the top of the jar because liquids expand, boys and girls. You don't want broken jars. I've made that mistake before. So leave some space in the top and they freeze great. Dairy, okay, so we talked about cheese upstairs, but you can also freeze cream cheese, sour cream, cream, ricotta cheese. Now, once they're thawed out, you're going to want to use them for cooking, not so much just plain eating or topping because the texture changes slightly, but this works great for soups, casseroles, crock pot dishes. Hang on, stock up when it's on sale and pop it in the freezer. Same with yogurt. You can freeze yogurt directly in the container. And again, you wouldn't want to just eat it plain, but it works great for desserts or for us. We love putting a frozen yogurt right inside a smoothie. Tastes amazing. Butter is a big one. Stock up when it's on sale or you can buy it at Costco in big packages. Freeze it. It stays fresher way longer and it thaws out super quick. So ain't no shame in that game. Cranberries and fruit in general. Yes, you can freeze cranberries and yes, you can freeze them whole. Not only then do they thaw out and you can use them for holidays for, you know, cranberry sauce and things like that, but I love making cranberry salsa, so I like keeping these on hand. And then fruit in general, yes, you can freeze fruit. Why do you think they sell bags of frozen fruit in the frozen aisle? Newsflash, they freeze. Frozen fruit makes great smoothies and desserts and compotes, crumbles, and all sorts of things that I don't make because I don't like to bake, but smoothies are great at least. So fruit, fruit, fruit. Along with that is veggies, of course. You can buy packages of frozen vegetables like this, or you can freeze vegetables yourself. So if your garden is busting, make your own frozen veggies. Batters and doughs. Cookie dough, of course, freezes fantastically. So do some batters. Save the container, and then the container becomes a nice reusable freezer container for other things. In this case, white bean soup. Pizzas and frozen meals, of course, freeze great. Chicken breasts. One of the things that I will do is buy giant packages of boneless, skinless chicken breasts, or it could be chicken thighs or chicken wings or chicken tenders. You can divide them up and put them in individual baggies, one breast at a time, or in this case, I have two per bag. You can also vacuum seal them for extra protection. We just go through our chicken really fast, so I typically don't vacuum seal the chicken. Freeze it as flat as you can so it takes up the least amount of space. Bada bing, bada boom, perfect for cooking. If they freeze it in the store, you can freeze it at home. These are store-bought freezer meals, of course, but guess what? You can make these at home as well. Noodle bowls, breakfast bowls, breakfast burritos, lasagnas, whatever you see, make it yourself at home and freeze it for a fraction of the cost. Okay. Let's just talk about the freezers for a minute. I know I have a million of them and I know it is not typical. Some of them were left behind by previous owners, like I said, some of them we invested in ourselves. But now that we have them all, we use them. And I feel like I'm a little bit of a freezer expert at this point in time. So let me tell you the differences between freezers and the benefits of having them and how you can creatively find space for them in your own home. All right, so first up, you've got these traditional tall, 
freezers. These are, I would have to say, probably my favorite. If you are able to have even one of these anywhere in your house, in your garage, in a guest room, in a closet, or in this case, in a random storage room down in the depths of your basement, it is so worth it. What I love about these tall freezers is that it makes it easy to organize and find things. Another type of freezer that we have is a chest freezer, a dead body freezer, if you will. <laughs> Just kidding. Or am I? <laughs> These are great for meat. Deep freezing is awesome for things that typically stay in your freezer for quite a while and you don't rotate through quite as quickly. So for us, we've got one, and again, this is where we keep most of our bulk meat. Like if you split a cow or if you buy a large 40, 50, 60 pound packages of meat like we used to, keep them in a deep freezer. The benefits is that it keeps things fresher longer because the cold air really stays nice and cold in a deep freezer. The downside is that whatever's on the bottom is basically lost to the world of whatever the heck is down. What's down there? We're coming for you, buddy. This is where that freezer inventory printable that's linked below will really come in handy. For us, we've actually started trying to get away from these chest freezers, and that's why we bought another upright freezer. We're gonna eventually move all of this in there and probably get rid of this because I just can't get down there. I can't get down to the bottom. And then the last kind of freezer, of course, is like the one up in my kitchen that is usually attached to a fridge, whether it's a pullout, whether it's a side open or whether it's a top open freezer. Those are great for things that you use and rotate through regularly. We're talking everyday items like bread, frozen veggies, and then save these big storage freezers for things you don't use quite as often and need to be stored really well for a long time. So there you go, there's a look inside all of my mini freezers. I have a lot more information for you on things you can freeze, how to freeze them, hacks for freezing and thawing them, I have that all in a blog post that I will link below, so please check it out. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, will you give it a thumbs up? Thank you. New videos every Thursday around here. We've got all sorts of frugal living, productivity, family, and finance hacks and tips, so be sure to subscribe. And uh, I think that's it. If you don't mind, I have a couple of freezers. I need to clean and organize an inventory, so I'm gonna let you go. I just need you to wish me luck, because I have a lot of, a lot of freezers. See you next time. Oh, wish me luck. All right, since we're in the, what are, what are we in? What is this? Okay, sorry, I just repeated myself, so I'll just pick whatever was best. Let me try that again. <laughs>